Yeah, welcome back. It's still the run-up and uh, we're glad that you are there. But ominous clouds appeared over the, uh, the general elections last week as a chaos spread across the country over a lingering scarcity of fuel and Naira notes. The fuel supply crisis has been going on for several months, but the currency crisis wasn't till date with protests and riots ensuing in some parts of the country. We do hope that with the pronouncement of the, the president that uh, things will get a little bit better. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tinobu, alleged that the scarcity which has caused frustration and hardship for the people across the country was contrived to precipitate a national crisis and forced general elections to be shifted from 28th of February or oh, well, from the 25th of February to another date. River State Governor Nyesom Wike echoed the allegation at the rally in Opobo Nkoro local government area of the state, warning those allegedly trying to scuttle the elections and force an interim government to desist from the plot. Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai jumped into the fray when he said that some elements at the presidential villa in Abuja were colluding with the opposition to deny Mr. Tinubu and the APC victory at the elections. And even the member of the PCC, APC PCC, uh, Femi Fani Coyote, uh, alleged allege that there was a coup plot by an opposition party. Uh, that for that he was invited by the DSS and uh, really, really drilled and asked a lot of questions. After which he said he regrets ever saying that. All these accusations have some way suggested plans to truncate the elections. But asking the question whether the elections can or cannot hold on the 25th is another thing. And joining us to discuss this is Dr. Omoshola Deji. Doctor, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you, Bob. Mm. It seems where you are is quite good. Here we don't have Naira. Here we don't have cash. Nobody is spending money anyhow and there is suffering. But our greatest concern this morning is whether or not, from all the projections, from all the talk that we've been hearing, do you think the election can hold on the 25th of February? Well, I think there's no reason for the election not to hold because the INEC and sister agencies that are involved in the planning of the election has um, had four years to prepare. So if you have four years to prepare for an exam, even if you don't know anything about the exam, it is presumed that at least you should be able to pass because four years is quite a long time. Um, it's quite enough time for INEC to prepare for the election. I would say that the preparation of INEC is one thing, the willingness of sister agencies to make sure that the electoral process is successful is another thing. In Nigeria, we say we have the Independent National Electoral Commission. But the word independence is a relative term. Is INEC really independence? We've had cases whereby INEC was ready to prepare and to conduct the election, and the security agencies came up and said they are not ready. So in this case, if such a thing should happen again, INEC will be um, restless. There's nothing INEC can do. We've had situations also that INEC had provided all the logistics, they have hired transport workers, they have paid them, and they just decide not to show up to sabotage the process or to deliver electoral materials states in areas where they consider the strongholds of whoever they are supporting at that point in time. So the, the, the word independence is quite relative for INEC. INEC's success cannot be solely determined by the agency itself. And that goes a long way in determining whether the election will hold or not. But if the word of the president and the conduct of the security agency so far is anything to go by, I think we should have the election. But if the pockets of um, um, protest that we are having now, should it escalate, 
if the security agencies get overwhelmed, then we might have a case whereby the election might eventually not hold. But if that is not fair, if the election does not hold, I don't, for one, believe that um, the, the security agencies do not have the capacity. I would see it as the willing and uh, as the wish of the fifth columnist coming to pass, and that will be dangerous for our democracy because the constitution allows it that if the society is in chaos, if the society is, is in conflict, if there is anarchy in the society, then the election can be postponed. And we are already seeing signals of that. I just hope that the violence that we are seeing now as regards the Naira redesign will be curtailed as soon as possible within the next 10 days for Nigerians to be able to exercise their franchise. Okay, um, well, you talked about four years to prepare for an exam, which uh, INEC had. But as we speak, there are people who were not able to collect their PVCs uh, for various reasons. And INEC made it such a way that it is after four years that people begin to feel that there is an election coming, or after three years and a half, that people begin to feel this. Because of that, people are not able to collect their PVCs and all that. Do you think that shows INEC as a body that really prepared after four years for this election? Because as we speak now, there are people in court that are saying that INEC should allow them to use their um, temporary voters' cards because they were not able to collect their permanent voters' cards. And they don't see it as their fault. They see it as INEC's fault because they have been going to the places that they were supposed to collect these cards and have not been able to collect. There are people who have been there and they hear that their, their cards are somewhere else. They go to that place. They don't find it. They are referred to another place. And all, that, all those kinds of things are making the people really angry that INEC didn't live up to their expectations. And now they will be disenfranchised because of the same INEC. Do you think they really prepared well for this election? Uh, I think I'm not prepared, but we can't rule out the normal Nigerian fire brigade approach in terms of our planning and execution of projects. Now, in our country, people barely make um, adequate plans. So we, we can't rule that in the, um, the, the planning of INEC. But one thing we must note is that even if we give Nigerians and Ireland 10 years to prepare, if the election cycle is 10 years, I can assure you that within that 10 years, there will still be people that would still complain that they haven't been able to collect their PVC, either because INEC has failed to fulfill its own part or the people themselves uh, decide to either not register at, at, at the right place, um, rush our um, collection of PVC. So many human errors, human factors would be responsible. So I think what we need to do is for both INEC and the citizens themselves to stick to the timetable and to respond at the right time. When there is something, we don't need to wait till the time minute. Another point is that we can't rule out the staff at INEC. They are human beings in our society whereby politics determines, like we, it plays a major role in our society based on the premium that we placed on it. Definitely, you would not expect that the people at INEC will be sent. There will be one or two sabotage here and there, but it is the duty of the institution to purge itself. We've seen cases whereby they have to pick PVCs, you know, um, in the gutters, waste bin, you know, people's PVC. So, that can only be done in collaboration with some of the INEC staffs, whereby political party will last with them. And the stronghold 
definitely would. So many people will not be able to locate their PVC just to reduce the number of votes in that area. And I think that is a serious crime which INEC itself needs to prosecute some of its staff and hold them accountable. Because as it, as it is in Nigeria today, the only thing that Nigerians can say that they have is the right to vote. There's no electricity, there's no water, there's even no Naira note, nothing is working. Now, okay, allow people to vote. You are still denying them such rights. So for me, it is a serious offense that INEC itself needs to look into. The recruitment process in INEC, party affiliation, these are crucial things, especially now that we have the uh, main contenders from different ethnic groups. We've seen cases in Lagos whereby some, um, a particular ethnic group uh, um, complained of not being able to collect their PVCs. And when they were calling out the names, 99% of the names were from a particular ethnic group. This is something that can lead to serious crisis if not well checked. So the election should be free, fair, and credible in the sense that if you register, you know that you have your PVC and you can vote without any let or hindrance. Yeah, uh, some a few days ago we, we saw the news, or I saw the news that um, <clears throat> INEC is getting ready to send text messages to eligible voters telling them where their polling units will be so that they can go and vote there seamlessly. And I felt that they could have done this thing to all the people who were qualified to collect their PVCs and tell them this is where you go and you're going to get your PVCs. That, that was not done. But right now, another worrisome thing to the people is that INEC is talking with NURTW for logistics on the election day. They will likely be the people to carry election materials, whether they're sensitive or non-sensitive, but that's not the issue. But NURTW is the one that INEC is engaging. INEC at this point was worried that Central Bank of Nigeria had brought a policy, a cashless policy, and they were worried. That means they were not prepared for this kind of a thing, for transportation of materials to wherever they should be, and for the money for the logistic uh, runs, as it, as it were. Does that seem like something that a body like that should do? I'm, I'm asking all these questions, not because of this election only, but there are things that we need to point out at this point that INEC or any other um, relevant body should start looking at, should start thinking of for the next cycle of election because four years before we know it is here. So they are engaging, engaging the NURTW for the transportation of election materials. Do you see that as a good thing for the process? No, it's not a good thing, but um, like I said earlier, INEG is operating under limited choice. If they don't patronize the commercial transport drivers, who are they going to use to transport the materials? Are they going to use government vehicles? People will complain that that will favor um, whichever party is the incumbent in the state. Are they going to meet um, private individuals? That won't work. So INEC is operating under limited choice. If INEC does not patronize the, um, the Oluwampo boys in Lagos, for example, What's the alternative? And that's the problem. There's no alternative. And if you look at the cost of owning, the cost of owning election, um, the, the cost of owning and maintaining vehicles for four years, it's quite humongous. INEC does not have such kind of form. If INEC is to buy vehicle in each, each um, vehicle that can effectively transport its material in all the local government in Lagos State in no. Imagine that. The vehicle is not going to drive itself. The human beings that are going to drive it are going to be paid. Are you going to hire people to just drive the bus for just one day? 
No. So you need to have like standby drivers. And at the end of the day, there's no way you can program the vehicle that, okay, if I say go to point A, you must go to point A. No, the vehicle will only go to where the driver wants it to go. So if, 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 if these limitations affect the effectiveness of INET. So what I think we need is a general reorientation for people to see participation in the electoral process as a call for national service. They should see themselves as eating the clarion call. If they see it like that, nobody will want to sabotage the process for any kind of gain whatsoever. And if we have institutions that work, in the sense that if you sign an agreement with INEC and you breach that agreement, then you will stand in for it. So when people go to jail for trying to deny people their legitimate right to vote during an election, I believe that other drivers or other people that are involved will be more careful, just like the professor that was jailed, um, I think it, um, it was at Akwaibo that was jailed. Now, that sends a strong signal to other professors that will be used as coalition officers during the election that if you subject yourself to the whims and caprice of politicians, definitely you will eventually find yourself behind bars. So I see a situation whereby in this coming election, most of the professors we sit tight. They won't want to disrepute themselves, drag their family name in the mud for um, one politician that probably um, doesn't even have a degree. So I think if a professor can be jailed, then transport workers who try to sabotage the process should be jailed as well. If you won't participate let INEC know that, okay, I'm not available, fine. But if you decide to participate, you sign an agreement with INEC, and you are paid accordingly, there should be no excuse, because this has to do with the will of the people. Yeah. So for, for somebody somewhere to sabotage the process, then it is something that should not be tolerated okay. in any way or manner whatsoever. Okay, well, I do hope that INEC will start to think about the possibility of not needing uh, NURTW in the future, not needing the polling units that will need them to carry ballot papers all around. Also, uh, making sure that people who are outside Nigeria can vote, and that way you don't you cannot uh, engage uh, NURTW to carry papers all around or sensitive materials to London, for instance, or to China or wherever Nigerians may be. And I can stay in the studio and then uh, five minutes, I have a lunch break. I can go outside and vote anywhere that I want to vote and then it will still be reflected. All those things are possible in a technological age. Maybe I next should begin to think about that so that they don't need too much logistics uh, f to, to throw their, their house open, as it were, to other people. Well, I like the optimism that you have brought and said that they, the election has no reason not to hold. That is a very, very important aspect that people are just waiting to hear from people that they will respect like you, Dr. Deji. So thank you so much for being a part of our show this morning. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Yeah. We've been talking with Dr. Moshala Deji, a political analyst, and he's optimistic that the election will hold on the 25th of February. It should hold on the 25th of February. And whatever you're doing as a Nigerian and you love your country, at least, uh, even if you have the means to jagwa, as everybody is uh, talking about now, there are people who need this country for their sake, if not yours. Please do the right thing. And I'd like to commend Lagos State. Um, so far, in spite of the hunger, the suffering and all that, uh, relatively Lagos, Lagos has been very peaceful. And I thank the people of Lagos. We'll take this news break. When we return, we'll conclude the run-up. Stay with us. <laughs>